In the meantime, we're focusing on some names and some earnings like Tesla, for example. Big reaction there. Joining me right now to comb through some of the numbers, Melissa Armos with us, founder, owner of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you so much for being here, Melissa. Just before we get to specific names and companies, how do you feel about the market right now? Well, it's interesting. I think the last time we talked was before that big sell-off we had last week, which I predicted. And I think that more selling, I hate to say it, but I think more selling is coming up for the market. So just like Tesla was sort of a surprise on the earnings last night, my take is that we're going to get another surprise earnings that's a big name out either this week or next week, that between now and the end of next week, we have another sell-off coming in the market. Because, of course, the market was up today because of Tesla. So many of these big names affect the overall market. And I think 2024 really is a year where you're going to continue to see volatility. And the reason for that is because the market is so focused on interest rates. And again, we may not get any interest rate cuts at all in 2024. And will that eventually rock the market lower at some point towards the late summer, early fall of this year? I think people are expecting one to two cuts still at this point, but inflation is still too high. So my take in the market is that we may have set the highs for the year of the market, we may not make another high for the, between now and the end of 2024. All right, I wanna get to some of the big stories and that is first um, Tesla. So when it was implied that the lower model was off the table, uh, but, you know, you had Elon Musk come out and say that Reuters was lying again or something like that. And now after this earnings report, while you did see the misses, you did see a lot of talk about cheaper models and things like that. Um, how do you feel about the 11 and percent move today? I, I think it's it's probably a day where we, we didn't trade it today at the stock push. I think it's a day where you got to let it settle out itself. I think it was a big jump, so you must respect the gap. You know, just two days ago, the stock was in the 130s, and then it opened today over 160. So you must respect that type of move in the bullish gap that it had today. I'm not necessarily saying that you should go long, but I really don't think you should short it here. I think you need to wait and see how the news settles out on it. It was unexpected. A lot of people had a bearish bias on this stock. And then they were very surprised today with the amount of jump that it had. So you're going to see some short covering today. And then you're also going to see some people buying today because I think this is the end for the stock, that it's never going to go any lower, that all the problems are solved. And there were several reasons why it jumped. They think they're going to have better deliveries in 2024, that there's going to be a lower price model. I still think it's very expensive. And remember, people have to buy into this idea that they're going to have an electric vehicle. And I think there's a problem with that, with convenience, with charging your cars. We don't have enough setups around the country for that. A lot of people don't want to be bothered with that as well. It's not like as convenient as going into a gas station, which there's many of anywhere you go. The one thing that I think is a takeaway from the earnings, though, is the amount of layoffs that they have coming in Texas. And that is something to watch for every single big company in the next month. Because if you have continued layoffs with these very large companies, that's not good for the market overall either. That's not good for the economy. That could signal higher unemployment numbers going forward into this next several right, quarters right. in 2024, and that's going to affect the market too. Right. Look, and Tesla is still a play on autonomy. That's still um, in the forecast. There was a feeling that uh, that this time Elon Musk took this call a little more seriously than he did last time. He did talk about the development of new affordable EV models by early 2025, which some people would say is not soon enough. But it, it just showed and I guess quelled some concerns that he's been distracted or not you know, giving some clarity about the future. But to your point, you don't feel comfortable buying it and you don't feel comfortable shorting it. How about some other names in focus? I mean, General Motors, we got some good news there. GE Aerospace has been in focus. Uh, we've seen some up arrows there. How do those jump out at you? Do you have some names that are some good buys or are you just sort of watching the moves? Well, no, I mean, I think that we did, again, earnings season is a time where you can look to go long stocks. Last time we spoke, I said I didn't like anything long. There are some things now that I think you could jump into that have nothing to do with the market. That, you know, if you want to get long and swing trades or long-term buys, I like TXN this morning. That had earnings. I did like yesterday's earnings on GE and GM as well. Again, it's okay to go long some things that you are want to be in long-term that you think are strong. 
It doesn't mean they're not going to have a dip back if the market decides to sell off again here in the next two weeks, like I mentioned. But I think that when you see some of these strong reports coming out, it's a good sign for some of these companies. And again, the market rally yesterday, which helped some of these stocks too, but there's definitely certain stocks now that I think the ones, the three that you just mentioned, TXN, GM, and GE, that could be buys for swing trades or even calls if you wanted to do options in them to, to get a nice leg up or a nice move up. And the market could have a secondary move up um, you know, between now and the, and the next month. But again, with so many earnings coming up right now, I'd be very, very cautious because I think we're gonna have another surprise. It could be Meta tonight. Yeah. Meta is out tonight. Microsoft is out tomorrow night. E any one of these things could be surprises. And those are two very, very strong stocks. They've been both on a tear. And if either one of those gap down and fall and collapse or crater, the market's going to fall between now and the end of the week. Yeah, yeah. And what was the one you said this morning that you liked? I didn't catch it. A B B A, I think, is lower. BA is collapsing, okay. as, we, as we're talking right now. BA, oh, BA I thought gapped I misunderstood. Down, I really thought low. you liked it. Okay. Oh, All no, right, not, we'll leave it there. Sure. We're going to have a whole... Uh -huh. We're going to have a whole uh, panel on that later in the show. So thank you for everything. Melissa Armo, great to see you of the stock swoosh. Thank you. Coming up next, it's the disruptors. George Sillis is standing by. He's going to take a look at Texas.